Hello, I'm Dr. David Saperstein, Director for the Center of Complex Neurology, EDS and POTS in Phoenix, Arizona. I'd like to talk briefly about uh, seizures and autonomic disorders and fainting. So the question comes up often um, whether people with POTS or other autonomic disorders can progress to seizures or conversely, oftentimes Patients with these disorders have been diagnosed with having seizures or suspected of having seizures. So most of the time what's happening is there's inadequate or suboptimal blood flow to the brain that's occurring basically because somebody's fainting. And most of the time when you faint, or medical term syncope, most of the time when there's not sufficient blood flow to the brain, people just go limp collapse or slump down. For sometimes, instead, there'll be stiffening in the body and there could be jerking and shaking and it can look like a seizure. And in medical terms, we call it convulsive syncope. So syncope or fainting, that looks like a convulsion, looks like a seizure. Uh, if you study somebody with an EEG during that, you'll actually see brainwave patterns that get decreased and suppressed, like what happens in syncope, and we don't see abnormal electrical activity. It's not an epileptic seizure. Um, sometimes it, it happens and we're not sure why. It's more likely to happen if somebody isn't able to get flat right away. So again, if you feel faint and you slump down and you're, and you're laid flat, then you'll just have what looks like a faint or syncope. If you try to have syncope and you're wedged up against something or you have well-meaning people who are holding you up and prolonging that period of decreased blood flow to the brain, then that may be more likely to bring out a convulsive syncope pattern and, and, and may make it prolonged. Uh, certainly it's always possible that people can have both syncope and seizures, but in my experience most of the time you can sort this out by finding out what episodes or what sort of symptoms provoked the, the instance, provoked the occurrence, and uh, you know, what else is going on. EEG tests where we look at the brain waves can be valuable even after the fact. Sometimes if people have a tendency towards seizures, we'll see abnormality on an EEG. Ideally, getting an EEG during the episode would be of most value. Sometimes if they're frequent, we can do this. We do monitoring. We can do monitoring at home for a few days, or um, sometimes we're fortunate in catching it. But um, again, it seems more often than not what's actually an event related to decreased blood flow from the autonomic disorder. More often than not, that's getting called a seizure or being suspected of a seizure. Of course, for complex issues like this, you need to be thoroughly evaluated by a medical. Thank you. There's more that I'd like to share with you about the center, and that can be found in additional videos. Please go to our website and find links to other videos or find ways to contact.